made it so much more people than yesterday rehearsal. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to manage my stage panic too by imagining this is a Zoom call and I'm sitting in my desk at my uh, living room. Now, anyway, seriously, thank you, Shai and Uri and the Elastic team for organizing this and giving us the opportunity to share some of our uh, journey uh, with Elastic. And, uh, well, David and I are here today to give you a glimpse of what has been our journey from a large on-prem Elasticsearch cluster into the managed Elasticsearch service in the cloud. We have uh, came all the way from Booking.com here in Amsterdam to yeah, share this with you. And, and uh, we have divided this journey in two main aspects, the business aspects, understanding uh, the business case to be done for the internal management team, uh, representing what we believe is the value of uh, taking this journey, um, and the technical aspect that David is going to share with us as well. It's going to be a very brief, very high-level overview, but feel free, free, free to reach out to us later during the conference for any further questions. So this is what it looks like. It's a journey, it's a challenge, and um, we need equipment, we need skills, uh, and we need funding, right? Um, and to get the funding and to every investment, there is a return expectation. So the four main pillars that we have um, used to build this business case internally is the strategic outlook of Booking.com company, the risks landscape, sustainability and capabilities we are able to provide to our stakeholders that, by the way, are uh, the security department in Booking.com. So Booking is using Elastic for many years and uh, using Elastic in many areas. We're focusing here in the security department where we provide a security platform and many teams with the specific security domains leverage on this tool as part of the security platform offerings we provide to them. So in the strategic outlook, um, Booking.com has decided not to become a cloud, public cloud provider. Uh, therefore, the on-prem data centers are uh, definitely uh, oriented for internal applications, and it's a challenge, or it's a very um, important um, maintenance effort to maintain a large deployment across multiple on-prem data centers. In addition, the company as well has taken a strategy to become more elastic to the market changes. We have learned what happened during COVID, and having a large um, implementation of servers, it's sometimes a challenge. Therefore, um, the conclusion here is talking about transferring some um, capital expenditures into operational expenses, which means that a cloud service that can scale up and down easily is more suitable. In addition, um, we in security handle very sensitive data. And uh, it is a risk for the company, both for brand reputation and potentially impacting revenues, to expose this. So maintaining a large fleet of servers on-prem, managing constantly its vulnerabilities, updating the versions, updating the servers, takes a huge toll in the team. In addition to that, we have to be able to provide very, very careful access controls um, and auditing capabilities, so we understand how the data is being used for the purpose. So, in order to mitigate this risk and reduce the possibility of getting large fines and impacting negatively the brand reputation, we also believe that moving into the cloud with a managed service made sense. We're half through of the business case, which take, uh, took a long time, but then now talking about scalability. We want to make sure that the service can expand with business um, organically, but also allowing security teams to discover more areas to cover and continue to ingest more data and use this data for subsequent use cases. Um, so with the scalability, on-prem comes capacity planning, plan, uh, long-term uh, buying servers and so forth. And this takes, of, of course, an operational toil in the team. In addition, we want to make sure that teams are able to leverage the most, take the most out of the service we're providing to them. And having a team of experts that can support us in this journey, like technical account managers, professional services, and the amazing team from Elastic, especially in the security aspect that Uri mentioned, is very, very relevant. 
Therefore, we believe it's much faster to arrive to that expected return of investment. Finally, um, we want to make sure that the capabilities of what we offer to our security teams evolve, hopefully faster, than the threat landscape and the attack techniques and, uh, that, that are out there. So um, we believe that it's important to guarantee that the teams has access to all of these amazing features that Uri has mentioned and the future that Elasticsearch uh, and Elastic is going, and also leverage in the security module, machine learning models, anomaly detection, and therefore transition from observability, data visualization, and manual dashboards and monitors into a more automated approach of security, handling large volumes of data with not so large human team members, uh, and then effectively address the security use cases. Now let's see the technical challenges, and uh, let's go with David. So technical challenges were plenty to basically to explain what running Elasticsearch on-prem meant, and then what moving to the cloud. So spoiler alert, a pain. Running Elastic on-prem at that scale was just pain. So we had, at the peak of this story, we had 1,900 servers. That was some point in time back when pandemic would have been more associated with a board game or a light beer. And we had a server fleet, 1,900 servers, managed by the total number of two engineers. So for some numbers, that meant four petabytes of storage, uh, 230 terabytes of RAM, 32,000 CPU cores. So it was over-provisioned by a lot. So it was a great achievement for us. Right? We had two people successfully maintaining and evolving a fleet of 1,900 servers. But seriously, 1,900 servers, two people. The operational toil and complexity was not nice. I mean, it's, um, think about uh, maintaining an aging fleet of 1,900 caps, breaking stuff all the time. So why was this a problem? So there's a lot of skill required in running a fleet of this size. You need to know and understand Linux operating system, Puppet, Nginx, HA proxy, Elasticsearch, uh, Java, JVM tuning and all the other tooling that needs to be there just for compliance and logging and, well, and whatever else. Break fix stuff. So as I said, 1,900 physical machines in a data center. Every day something breaks. Like uh, you have a broken disk, you have a misbehaving network interface card, you have a memory dims going out the window, uh, you have your network noise, and you have, then you have a poor distribution, and the top of rack um, switches are overloaded. So everything fails. And then you add your garden variety software bugs or poor tooling interaction. Then you have to deal with compliance and security. We have to guarantee at disk encryption, so implementing that with Lux, Linux Unified Keys encryption system, for those that don't know. We had to do certificate management of every box in the fleet. We have to ensure we have all the compliance all the compliance and security requirements of the entire tool chain of a bare metal server, maintaining access control, authentication, authorization, and dealing with the fact that 1,900 servers and all the circumventing tooling present a huge attack surface for a security product. Then you have standardization. So as I mentioned, we are built on Puppet. The dependency graph of this fleet was huge, and uh, configuration drift was a very real thing. A server that booted two years ago was very, very different from one that was just spawned, even though the manifests were the same. The Puppet manifest we used was also multi-tenant. As Gabriel explained, we're, we're not the only Elasticsearch users in the company. So maintaining and evolving that and making it better for our use case had a lot of friction. For um, some summary, we had 92,000 Puppet daily runs and around 160 operating system upgrades per day with reboots if they required so. And then scaling bare metal infrastructure is not the easiest thing, even if it's automated to a good degree. The best was a few hours. The worst was waiting for provisioning and moving boxes in the data center. So that wasn't easy or fun. And deploying configuration changes and coming up with rolling upgrades, particularly with Puppet, is not the most straightforward task. So what we had achieved on-prem was a beautiful array of 
a messy structure in the foreground and in the background, like that image there, courtesy of James Webb. So to reduce overhead of running and operating Elasticsearch to the cloud was the natural way to go. So we adore chaos because we love to produce order. Migrating to the cloud. So let's build us a happy little cloud that floats around the sky, as Bob Ross said. So in case it's not clear, too many words, I'm going to use quotes a lot. So in order to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first create the universe. Main goal here, what we set out to, was to do more with less. We wanted a compliant environment, minimized operational overhead, scalable, secure, with a granular access model, tying into single sign-on, feature-rich and future-proof, so no big thing. Time for the sign came, and it's, yeah, have no fear of perfection, you'll never reach it. So with that in mind, we had a collaborative process with Elastic Engineering, focusing on retaining flexibility, most of all, because it's the thing we lacked dearly in, uh, in our on-prem infrastructure. So ability to expand, modify, improve, and adapt. We arrived at an architecture of clusters for data and some other clusters that to serve as front-end with Kibana, serving the API, doing machine learning, and using cross-cluster search heavily. Hot, warm, cold, frozen for the actual data and architecture, and modular and tiered data model sitting on top of the Elastic Common Schema. Everything was defined with infrastructure as code, leveraging on tools like Terraform and some other custom repositories. And finally, implementation time, where we wanted to do is, if you build it, they will come. Now, that's not so easy. So what actually happened is we built a testing environment, recruited some willful and not so willful stakeholders to rough out the edges. Uh, and after initial success, we just spawned up the entire production infrastructure and switched indexing from on-prem to cloud. That was actually a lot easier than anybody suspected. And people were actually surprised that it was just that easy. Uh, but there was a lot of work in preparation. So we started moving stakeholder use cases. And there was a lot of work from transferring dashboards and making interpretations of data from the way they were done in the past to hot, cold, and ILM-based. And the key to all of this transition being successful is, was to make the new product better like less friction, more features, better support, and higher velocity for everybody involved. So it took around three months from setting requirements to moving the first production use case to the cloud. But what's life in the cloud? Because the cloud is just somebody else's computer, right? So from around 1,900 servers on prem to around 400 nodes in the cloud, over 18 deployments certainly fits the concept of doing more with less. From around 20, 30 users to 150, from two, three teams to over 12. In data, we now have around one petabyte stored. Uh, we are ingesting around 100 terabytes daily over 100 data streams. Um, at best on-prem, I think we did around 25 or 35 terabytes per day. Storage address was about similar, but it was a lot less efficient in terms of replica management and duplication. And the most important for me, being an SRE, was toil. So right now, I say we spend about half a day actually worrying about cloud infrastructure, and this includes upgrades. And when in the past, as I said, every week we would have a couple of days lost just dealing with bare metals machines and whatever they entailed. So the point is we can now focus our engineering time on managing data, worrying about business logic, building features, and doing better. So we got there. We arrived to the cloud. Everything is working. Is it um, worth it? This really supported our business growth and security growth. Um, and we've been able, in this short period of time that we have been in the cloud, to reduce long-term backlog of security operation teams by 89%, enabling them access with longer-term data uh, faster, increasing the freshness from uh, days or hours uh, that they had available the data to minutes. 
um, therefore lowering their mean time to respond to incidents. We have less false negatives by guaranteeing that data is available and having machine learning models with anomaly detection to identify silent sources that are not arriving for some reason. And we have um, high volume security controls. Uh, possible to implement automatic, automated security controls on high volume data um, within the networks, payments, and user be behavior analytic domains. In addition to that, we also uh, are able now to increase versions faster and provide the new features of uh, the new versions of Elastic to our stakeholders in shorter time frames with less effort. What happens next? What are the new horizons looking forward? We want to make sure that we continue to leverage on the optimized architectures that Elastic is constantly trying to find out to be able to have more data in the cloud with the same or less cost, uh, increase the leverage of teams, not only from using the search, discover, visualization, or dashboards, but actually moving into automation realm, leveraging on machine learning, leveraging on out-of-the-box detections and alerting mechanisms to be able to handle search volumes and um, increasing the use of the common schema beyond cyber for fraud use cases, trust and safety, and so forth. Thank you very much. Thank you.